Welcome back to the Morales channel, my name is Ash. When you're building a game where the players themselves can actually own assets within that game, you have to make sure that fun from the front end is getting recorded immutably on the back end. And the way you achieve this is by creating smart contracts that map events from the front end to record them immutably on chain. And on today I'm going to go through with you line by line a couple of example smart contracts that you can recreate and use in your own games. So first thing we're going to do is in our IDE, which is Visual Studio Code here, or any text editor, we're going to clone down the Git repository in the link in the description to our NFT game sandbox. Because in here we have our contracts, the two contract examples we're going to be looking at. The first thing is that these two contracts are non-fungible token contracts. And that is because they are both using different standards. The ERC-1155 standard for our asteroids, which can be analogous to land, and ERC721 for our characters in our game. So these are both assets within our game, but they have different functionality around them that means we need to make a design decision around the token standard that we're using. And with asteroids, nothing is going to be changing about our asteroid or our land because we're just, we've got a coordinate of where that land is and how big that land is. And so we can very efficiently batch mint our asteroids using the ERC-1155 standard, whereas with our characters, we're gonna be building with ERC-721 because there is certain functionality that means we're gonna be minting our characters on the fly. So that is just one design consideration that means we need to create two smart contracts for our land, our asteroids, and characters within our game. And they're the two examples that we're gonna be going through. Let's pop open our character contract for our game. Just to note that both these contracts are also agnostic to what you're going to be using to build the game on the front end with. So whether you're using a 3D engine like Unity or a 2D engine like Phaser, these contracts are still going to apply the logic that is within them. So on the first line here, we've got the Pragma directive, which tells the compiler of the contract to use Solidity. And in this case, we're using 0.8 version and above. Next, we have imports of other contracts. So these are contracts from Open Zeppelin, which is an audited smart contract library that contains much of the functionality that we don't need to be recreating within this contract. And here's where we begin the contract itself and where we declare inheritance from the imported contracts above. ERC721 URI storage is an implementation of the ERC721 token standard that includes metadata extensions, which are very useful for storing character data like images and models that isn't efficient to directly store on the EVM chain itself. Ownable is regarding permissions around each character token that's gonna be created and who it belongs to. And then we create state variables that will set up the rest of the contract's functions. Most of these are gonna be public variables that include max limits for amount of tokens that can be minted per address and fees that you can apply to generate income from the execution of certain functions. We then define our struct type to represent a record of our character's attributes to keep a track of the characters within our game universe. So the format within the struct is to declare the attribute like a level, DNA, etc. And then along with its type like string and uint8, etc. We then map that struct to a publicly accessible var so we can retrieve the info on chain about that character. And here it's under the particular naming convention of underscore token details. Here we define an event which will be emitted when a new character is minted to read out the values from that character. Here we're defining a var mapped to an eth address which can then be used to check how many characters that specific address has minted. So that can be used as a condition when minting a new character. We check whether they've already reached the max limit. Finally, we're declaring the constructor function, which will be executed only once per contract and is invoked when a contract is created. And in this particular case, we're using that single opportunity to assign the account that deploys the contract as the contract owner, which here will be the game developer. They're kind of like the admin role. Now we get into the functions that are gonna be running the logic of our characters. First, we're declaring a few custom utility functions though. One, to generate a random number for our character's DNA and rarity. The other is to assign conditions to the creation of each asset when we're minting. Then we've got functions used exclusively to read data from our characters on chain. These are exclusively just to get and read, so they're not writing anything. This first one, get token details, which uses the mapping from our char struct 
to read the character's attributes. Get token circulations uses the counters utility which we inherited from Open Zeppelin above to get the current total of the characters minted. Token URI reads out the metadata URI that is going to be associated with an individual character and contract URI reads out the metadata summarizing the entire character set or collection. So that would be stuff like this is a collection of astronauts, <laughs> that sort of thing, and title images that will be shown on marketplaces such as OpenSea. Finally, we've got the write functions that create and potentially update our character's attributes immutably on chain. This is divided into player executable and admin or game dev executable actions. First, the player can execute the mint function, seeing as when they go to create a character on the front end within the game, it's the function that's going to be fired in order to make that character immutable so that they can own it. So this is like a custom wrapped mint function that uses the open Zeppelin mint function, but wrapped in a custom function that uses the earlier mint compliance conditions so that it will only mint a character from the open Zeppelin contract to the player's address if it meets the conditions of the mint compliance function. The update bio function allows a character owner to change the on-chain bio about their character. So maybe they want to add a status about the character or they want to add some lore that they feel brings depth to that character and they can do that by executing this function on the front end. Here it uses the require function to check that the ID given to the function is a token that exists and then that the owner of the token is indeed the address executing the update bio call. Update metadata is a hybrid function in that only a player within the game can trigger it, but it is done programmatically via an account assigned by the game developer. And I've got a whole video diving way deeper into why this particular function is special and is built like this, so there's a link in the description. Then we've got functions designed to expose particular variables for the game developer account to administrate the characters. This includes setting the maximum amount of characters that can be minted per transaction or in total. Reveal function allows the game developer to trigger a change in the metadata from a hidden version to reveal each token's individually unique metadata instead. So it's kind of like a hidden pre-sale loot box function where you don't know what you're getting and then when you get hit reveal, when the administrator hits reveal, then people can see exactly what unique character they've got. Update fee lets the game developer adjust the fee that is applied to any functions that contain the payable keyword and then withdraw allows the withdrawal of any funds in the contract that get accumulated from said fees. So that about wraps up the character contract. Let's hop over to our asteroid contract. In our game we've got asteroids that act like land so players can obtain, own and trade space rocks and it's where the characters will colonize. As with the character contract, this asteroid contract is pretty much identical to that, but we're going to go through some of the very key differences in why we choose to use a different token standard as opposed to ERC721 for the characters. This one is ERC1155 and the difference is most important in the constructor where it declares a link to the base URI of each asteroid's metadata. This is most efficient because we're going to be uploading all the metadata JSON files first, say to IPFS, for the asteroids and then batch assign each asteroid token ID to one of these metadata links. So you can basically mint all of your asteroids all at once, which you wouldn't be able to do with ERC721, not as efficiently anyway. But as I say, everything else down to the reveal and withdraw function are near identical to the character contract. It's just in the token standard itself that the design decision to use a different standard is just way more efficient and ERC1155 is the standard that accommodates a big batch minting on a large scale for an asset in a game that isn't going to need to change much in the future, if at all, apart from who owns that land, you know, who it's traded to. So that's our character and asteroid contracts that actually could apply to many, many equivalent assets under any other different name. What I'll do next is briefly show you the next step from here to be able to deploy these contracts or any other game contracts onto a live blockchain so that you can test against them. So we'll deploy them to a test net or even you can deploy them to a main net but you want to do a test net first so you can test calling the functions from your contract either from the ID itself or from the front end using Morales. So what we'll do is copy command C our entire contract so copy all the code and then we'll go to our browser and we'll go to remix 
This is an Ethereum IDE that we can deploy our smart contracts onto. Let's create a new file, right click, control click, new file. And let's call it character.sol. And then we're going to paste our contract into there. Should save. And as it's saving, we get a tick. And then what we're going to, yeah, so it should be compiled. Let's just make sure, double check. Yep, compiled successfully. And then we're going to go to deploy. And what we're going to do is let's do injected web three. And we're going to deploy to yeah Mumbai testnet. So I've currently got my MetaMask. So injected web three plugs into my MetaMask. I've got my MetaMask set to Polygon Mumbai, the testnet for Polygon, because we don't want to be deploying to mainnet. This is just a test. And once we are connected, we're then going to go select our character contract and hit deploy, and this should work. So this will work as long as you've got some Matic or some something to fuel the gas in your MetaMask account. Confirm. So every time you interface with the blockchain, it's going to ask you to pay some gas fee. This contract now on the front end using Morales, we can interface with all of these. This is a list of all the functions within our contract that we could interface with on the front end. So we've got get token details. We don't have any tokens yet. We haven't minted anything. But now let's go and do the same for our asteroid contract. So we go open our asteroids and copy it. So command A, command C. Let's create a new file, control click and asteroid.sol paste and hit save and it should compile hopefully successfully it has and then we're going to deploy it again to Mumbai testnet so our game is going to be built on polygon and so when we're in development mode in testing mode before production we want to be using Mumbai testnet so let's go to select object so I've called my contract object because it is a general contract for objects within games. Um, this It just happens with this game is using asteroids as their objects. But then we're going to deploy just the same as we did with the character. Deployed successfully, so just minimize that one. There we've got our object contract and again it's got all the functions. And so now on the front end we can design game loops using characters and objects and create a whole narrative and loads of fun on the front end, but also have that fun be immutably owned by its players. That about wraps up the video, but if you'd like the next one even sooner and to become a Morales mage, sign up for the Morales magazine down below. Thank you so much for watching. Look forward to seeing you in the next one. Happy biddling.